Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, today's build, what we're doing is from AMT Ertl. We have the Star Wars speeder bike. Uh, this was copyrighted, I believe, in 1996. And uh, let's look at the box. Now, I know Bandai has also really released a speeder bike uh, uh, with the rider on it also. Um, got this kit for a good price on eBay. So I've already opened it up and kind of removed the parts from the plastic. So, let's take a quick look at it. It says it has over uh, 70 parts here. We have, of course, the uh, speeder trooper, I guess. Speeder bike trooper. And pretty basic. It looks like he's basically his arms are a couple of parts. And then his body's a couple of parts. So, uh, pretty straightforward. I'm sure we'll be dealing with the... Uh, seam lines that we'll have once we put him all together and then painting him up and then the bike it looks like we have two runners of parts we have of course the main body here and the various different parts that make up the speeder bike pretty straightforward looks like we get a uh, you know clear display stand won't we'll be using that we'll make our own so maybe using the uh, holder there just depends on how it all holds it together Instructions look pretty, um, it's your basic uh, instructions, pretty straightforward on that. So, um, nothing fancy, we're going to build it. We might make a small display stand with some kind of scenery to it, uh, something of that nature. So, let's just get started. Alright, just uh, working on getting it all assembled here. As you can see, I got a lot of the, uh, kind of the main body, I guess, put together. Uh, a lot of seam work. Uh, on pretty much every part here so but all in all coming together pretty well you have like the front of the uh, craft here coming together the little skeletal work as far as the figure I have the uh, arms put together and just working on seams on that and I have made up a little seam filler this is this a little plastic cement with some styrene um, strips of styrene like I've shown this before it makes like a little kind of goo that you can put in it works good when you have like these kind of organic surfaces that um, kind of rounded off you know, I had some uh, some gaps here and there uh, this won't show but there were some some gaps where I filled in and then you just sand it off and I'll probably use that quite a bit I haven't put the body together yet the arms don't lock in they just kind of glue on so I can go ahead and uh, Assemble the body. Now to assemble the body, I had these connecting tabs, but they were super tight, so I went ahead and just trimmed them off, and that way I can make sure that at least when I go to glue it, I get a, a snug fit. Because sometimes those connecting tabs still, you can't get them quite seated, and it'll force huge gaps. This way, at least I can get a uh, at least a pretty good fit. As you can see, it's going on, even when I do that, it's still going to have some noticeable gaps and stuff. So I'm going to glue this part together. He's going to have to have a lot of seam work on him. And then we'll put his arms. We'll probably, uh, probably we'll paint him uh, with his arms off. And that way I can kind of get in here. It's going to be, the plan right now is just kind of paint him white. Or prime him, paint him white. And then uh, hand brush in all the black areas of his uniform. So that's where I'm at. And we'll just keep moving on. All right, uh, just working on our trooper here and just filling in the seams, taking away the seam lines. I put in my my gap filler with my glue styrene mixture. I let that set and then I've been just taking some uh, sanding sticks, some files, and even my little um, Zacto saw blade here to uh, get away or take away the seam lines. There was also some mold lines that ran kind of back across his leg in different places. A lot of work on his helmet, smoothing that out uh, around the shoulders. But I've also been going back and trying to, uh, with the saw and the files, to rescribe in some hard lines. Uh, this little pack right here. One thing about this is uh, it's kind of a soft, you know, it's all molded one piece. So some of the pieces kind of blending together. So uh, just like these little packs come down here, uh, taking my little blade, saw blade here. And was just uh, cutting it to give it kind of more of a hard edge that it actually is a separate piece because it kind of just blends in and that's true with a lot of things 
uh, around the tops of the boot. I've been taking my uh, my file here. I have different files and just been trying to get back that hard edge that comes around uh, to separate it. Uh, we'll prime over it. They'll uh, kind of expose uh, what seam lines they'll show. Right now it's kind of hard to tell. It does you, know, you can still see it, but I don't really feel it. So once I put primer on there, I'll see what work I still need to do to it. And the same kind of this. You can still see it, but I don't really feel it too much. And primer will kind of bring that out. Um, it will either cover it up or show it. But like I said, just uh, going back in, trying to Rescribe in some hard lines, getting some separation as much as I can between some of his equipment and his armor uh, to give it a more realistic look. All right, just uh, moving along here. Uh, you can tell I've put on a uh, primer coat, and I just used some of this uh, Vallejo surface primer, black surface primer. But then I went back and actually painted the uh, framework here, and for that I did a uh, kind of a black gray color from Vallejo uh, Model Air. And the reason I did that is black is seldom true black. Uh, black fades uh, quite quickly and even if you look at studio models it has kind of that gray tint. And we're going to be doing some other weathering to it but I didn't want to start off with pure black color. I want to kind of give that already kind of faded, a bit faded look. And so I think that was a good uh, part for it. I don't know how well it's coming off on the video here. You can tell a little bit of difference. Obviously we still have to paint this the brown uh, we're going to mask that off and paint that section. We still have parts to add that I'm leaving off for now because uh, I think it would be easier to paint them separately and then attach them later on after we uh, paint the body and up front here. So uh, just come along with that. The uh, still working on uh, the trooper. He uh, is just taking a lot of seam work. Um, nothing really to show. I just primed him over. Uh, just trying to get the little seams and bits and pieces on him to make him look better. So, we're uh, just moving on to painting the body now. Alright, well here we are with the finished model. I know there is a big gap between uh, where I last left off and the finished thing. We'll kind of walk you through it and tell you what I did. Uh, I did more building than uh, video, and obviously. Uh, so, just start off with the finish of the speeder bike. I uh, yeah, left off that black primer and uh, went back in and painted uh, different sections. Some sections I left off um, so I could paint it better. Um, I had to mask off the main body here and the some of these foils. Uh, some of the underneath foils were painted separately and then super glued on as these uh, rear sections and the under section right here were all that, that brown color. Now that brown color I was a mix. I took some Vallejo, um, I think it's camouflage pale brown and added in just a little bit of this German black brown and then uh, took that together and mixed it together again just a little bit of drop of that put a little bit of uh, thinner in there to kind of get it all flowing well until I kind of eyed the right color for it. I think the color turned out really well um, again mixed with those two colors. So I got those painted up uh, I painted the uh, his little uh, blanket or whatever back here. I think that was this kind of a beige color. Put a wash on that. Uh, I did a lot of dry brushing with some uh, steel, Vallejo steel, uh, once I got everything all painted up. Now the actual color of the uh, black parts, again, was not black. That was done with... Sorry. That was uh, this Vallejo um, black gray all in here. So I did all of the uh, darker areas in that color. I uh, did some dry pastels, kind of darken it up. And again, a lot of dry brushing just to kind of bring out the detail of it. I think the bike turned out really well. Um, the bike itself, the speeder bike, is, is fairly nice. There's a lot of parts to it. It's not uh, one of the more complex models from this era. The majority of the parts are the speeder bike. Now the Scout Trooper is a different story. Had a difficult time getting them. He's only a few parts. Uh, the body's two parts and the arms are two parts. So I guess six parts altogether. Uh, seam that runs all the way down that takes a lot of attention. There's gaps um, that you have to fill in. Uh, paint them. I just did a uh, Rust-Oleum gloss white over the whole thing. And then I went in uh, for the black and did some hand, hand painting with this Model Master. This is a semi-gloss acrylic and did all the black on there. Uh, I put on some 
uh, satin coats over them to kind of protect them. I did a, a little bit of a li very light gray wash, kind of hard to tell, but it fills in some of the details here. And a, a little bit of um, Tamiyo's weathering kits to dirty up um, his uniform. Didn't Not a whole lot. I didn't want to go too dark on his uniform. Uh, the the uh, obvious problem, as you can already see, is he's not sit, um, seated very well. I had a difficult time getting him to hold his handlebars and getting his feet on there. I think when I put this um, part that his, his feet rests on, uh, I put him up too high. Uh, I kind of glued him into what seemed the right position, but probably those should be lowered down. I probably should have test fitted that, but it is what it is at this point. So he stands off the seat a little bit. I waited to glue his arms on later because of the way he's grabbing the handlebars. He's not glued onto the bike. I can take him off. I almost contemplated just uh, demoing the bike itself without him on it. Um, you know, but for what it is, I did the best I could to get him to look the way he does. To kind of get along with the bike. Uh, the display stand I really like. Uh, what I did with that is I took one of these wood plaques you get from your local hobby stores. Added in some rocks. Uh, well, I first did a coarse surface here, and I did that with, uh, it's called Plaster of Paris. And you mix that, two parts of the Plaster of Paris, with one part water. And then from there, I mixed in uh, just some, like some play sand and a little gravel I threw in there to give it some texture. And then kind of pasted it on there. It thickens up really quick. I think within 30 minutes, it's pretty solid. Uh, so you can kind of work with it a little bit to shape it. I added in my rocks. Now the rocks were made using the plaster of Paris and this, these uh, silicone molds. And I got this at my local hobby store. I think you can get them on uh, Amazon or eBay and stuff of that nature. You just pour the plaster of Paris in there and uh, hardens up and it gives you these uh, different rock shapes. And there's a lot of different types of molds for different types of rocks and sizes. So put the rocks on there uh, with the plaster of Paris so they would be sealed in. Once that was all in, uh, the wood is this uh, actual wood. I had an old tree, dead tree that I cut down earlier this year. It was, a, I believe, a willow tree. So I kept some of the bark and let it dry out. And I just super glued that into place to kind of give it that contrast, that woody look. And the uh, greenery was this uh, this hobby greenery, this light green coarse turf. And how I put it on is uh, I just put bunches in there. And then I took some uh, extra thin CA glue and just kind of dripped it over it and it actually hardens into place. It's actually hard as a rock right there. But that locks it all in and it kind of worked for me. Uh, I, before I put on the wood and the grass, I did paint it with like a beige color and then I did a dark brown wash over everything, kind of see it in the rocks. And it kind of finished up with a little gloss coat over the rocks, kind of give it that wet look. So, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I'm really happy with the way the bike turned out, not so much with the Scout Trooper. Uh, he was difficult. He also looks a little little big for the bike. Um, he could probably be a little bit smaller. Again, the bike itself is very nice. Uh, it's a nice size. Let's see what we have here. It's about over 13 inches long, and it's current uh, with counting these, uh, whatever these are, engine covers coming out the way they do. So it's a really nice size. Anyway guys, appreciate you viewing. Until next time, everybody have a good one.